Hello, Jason Sullivan coming to you from the University of North Alabama. I wanted to share with you an exercise that I do pretty regularly in my own practicing and one that I've been working on with my students here at the university. A lot of us practice arpeggios and there are a number of reasons why arpeggios are a great thing to work on. A lot of us might work on consistency of tone or intonation or slide technique, articulation, all sorts of good things. But I think that there's one major thing missing from most of the traditional practicing of arpeggios. When we practice arpeggios, most people tend to practice them in what I would call a harmonically stagnant environment. For example, to practice the B-flat arpeggio, one might play B-flat, D, F, and B-flat. As a way to practice that arpeggio. The only problem is, we're practicing arpeggios so that we can be better at the patterns that typically come up in the repertoire that we have to play. But in the repertoire that we have to play, usually, harmonically speaking, things like arpeggios actually meander through a couple of different keys. So I've come up with an extended arpeggio exercise that is a little more grounded in the harmonic context similar to what we do in our repertoire. So the most common and basic forms of a chord progression would be something like a tonic dominant tonic or a one, five, seven, one chord. So what I like to do is take that one chord, let's say in the key of B flat, and I'll go up the B flat arpeggio, but instead of going down the B-flat arpeggio and just staying in B-flat, I'm going to go down the dominant arpeggio, the dominant seventh to be precise. So that would be F, and it would be an F7 chord, F, A, C, and E-flat. Those would be the notes that I would play, but I'm going to change the order of those notes so that we have nice uh, voice leading from a linear or horizontal perspective. When we practice things, uh, little patterns, and we want to play melodically, it's important to come up with those little voice leadings because that's what we're going to experience in the repertoire. And for me, that's a nice little 1571 arpeggio. So I'm going to put a metronome on. This is uh, 125 beats a minute and it's my randomly removed beats metronome that I like to use. You can find more out about that on my website. It's a great tool. Uh, I'm just going to play up some of the keys. up the entire range of the instrument up and down. Now that is one octave for the arpeggio and it's in what I would call root position. The B flat key is the one we started with and I started on a B flat for the arpeggio. So we would call that root position. But we could also work that pattern up as if it were in a first inversion. So if I start on a B flat and it is now the third of the chord, then that means I need to play a G flat major chord followed by a D flat seven. So the notes change to this. And then I would go down that B flat 7. And then resolving it back to that B flat. So this is the uh, extended arpeggio in first inversion. practicing up the whole range of the instrument. So from there, there's still one more inversion I can do. I could go to a second inversion where the B flat is now the fifth of the chord, which means that we're going to start in the key of E flat, and then we're going to go into the key of B flat seven. And that's going to sound like this. Here's the uh, E flat version. And then we go down that B flat dominant seventh. And in this particular context, it happens to be in root position. And then we resolve it to the E flat. So I could practice up that pattern. So this would be extended arpeggios in second inversion.
practice that all over the range of the instrument. Now, that's only dealing with one octave worth of range. And so when I practice this, I start there, but then I want to increase and expand the octave. So I call this extended arpeggios. And that would be level one, referring to just one octave. But if I wanted to go to, let's say, a level two, then what I would do is I would add a note to that arpeggio. So instead of just doing B flat, D, F, and B flat, I'm gonna add the next note of the arpeggio up to D. Now when I do that, it's gonna change which notes in that F7 chord I would then hit on the way back down. So this would be extended arpeggios, level two, because it's a little larger in range, uh, root position. And again, I can work the range of the instrument. So now, what I want to do is take that level two version, and I want to put that in an inversion, uh, in an inversion as well. So now I'll do it in first inversion. The B flat is now the third of the chord, so I'm starting in the key of G flat. I go up to that next note, and since you start on the third, and go an extra note, you'd be on the fifth now. this pattern as just demonstrated there. If there's the slightest bit of uh, focus or concentration lapse or slipping and I lose my focus just a little bit, I might completely lose track of where I am within the pattern and then I might completely botch the pattern. One of the things about doing static arpeggios is that it can get very mundane very quickly and so we can often just check out and play very mechanically and then we're just reinforcing, in some cases, very mechanical habits. Now high level players can pretty much play whatever they want and they can make it musical and sound beautiful but when working with developing musicians, I like to make sure that we're doing patterns and exercises that A, are grounded in the same harmonic context that the repertoire we're trying to prepare is grounded in and B, are advanced enough that require a higher level of thought to, to know what's going on in the pattern. I don't want anyone checking out and going out on autopilot too soon in the learning process. So again, that was uh, level two, and that was in first inversion. So now I could do level two in second inversion. Which takes us up to that tonic of the E flat key. This one I'm going to do as a pickup note, that's right. Every once in a while since you're adding more notes, it helps to change the rhythm up to line it up better. So you could take this pattern to let's say level two, then on to level three, which is where you would add one more additional note to the arpeggio. Or level four would be a two octave arpeggio. And then from there you would go down the dominant seven. You might have to add another note just to make it rhythmically line up, that's okay. Eventually I'd like to work up to the point where I'm doing three octave versions. And three octave versions uh, with inversions, being a second or first inversion from there, would be uh, even more challenging. So, just to recap, extended arpeggios function in a tonic, dominant tonic progression. So it's grounded in the harmonic context similar to our Western music. Uh, they are a little more advanced in terms of how you have to think your way through them, which I think is a benefit, not a detriment. So admittedly, this pattern is probably for a more advanced player, most likely at the collegiate level or beyond. Maybe some advanced high school students might want to give it a try. Totally fine. Obviously, uh, do whatever you think is working best for you. I'm going to post this on my website, and I will post a PDF download in the coming month so you can actually just see all the patterns and then just learn them up. 
uh, vary the articulation, have fun with it. But hopefully over time what happens is you gain uh, a level of harmonic fluency to where you can meander in between that tonic dominant key relationship. And these patterns should sound pretty familiar to us. Uh, most of Western classical music, for trombonists that practice Roshu melodies uh, and Roshu etudes, most of those are built based on basic vocalises which essentially function in a tonic dominant relationship. It's all sorts of one, five, seven, one uh, in the major and in the minor tonalities. So uh, this pattern should sound very familiar to us in particular who do that. So I hope you find this exercise helpful. I can't wait to see uh, comments that you might have about how it's working for you or questions that you might have. Happy practicing. Thanks everyone.